do you mean Timmy's in the well? I'm on the way. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're jumping into the computer. I'm gonna break down exactly how I created the superhero takeoff and landing effect in Final Cut Pro X. Let's get started. So we're in Final Cut. You wanna make sure that this whole sequence was filmed on a tripod. It's very important to make sure the camera does not move at all. You're gonna need a couple shots. You're gonna need one like this, where you or your subject is jumping up in the air like a superhero. You're gonna need another one where you are landing in a strong stance so it sells the effect in the end. And you're also gonna need a blank background. You're also gonna to wanna to make sure you shoot with manual focus and manual exposure so nothing changes during your shots. You're gonna to wanna to grab your first shot, which is your takeoff shot. And then you want to trim it down so you're in your upward momentum somewhere between the floor and the ceiling. So that looks pretty good right there. I'm gonna blade, cut the clip right there, delete the rest. Then you're going to grab your clean plate or your just your blank background. You're going to put that in front of the clip. From here, you're going to go to the last frame of your takeoff, and you're going to hit Option F, and that's going to create a freeze frame. So we're going to trim the freeze frame down to about two frames. There we go. And you're going to drag that clip on top of your blank background clip. You're going to click on your freeze frame clip, and you're going to grab your draw mask in your effects panel. And now you're going to cut out your subject. At the beginning of your freeze frame clip, you're going to want to hit your transform, set a keyframe. In the first frame of the clip, you want to move the subject up about halfway or so. And then on the middle of the frame, make sure you set it so their feet are just about out of the frame. You could go all the way out of the frame. I think it looks better like this. And so far you have something that looks like this. Now what you're going to want to do on your freeze frame clip is go into your effects direction. You'll use your directional video effect to drag that onto your freeze frame clip. So it's going upwards and kind of set the amount where you think the blur is satisfying. What you also want to do for the takeoff is find the spot he's just starting to take off, hit Shift B to create a break in the clip, and then you want to speed this part up. So we'll just go two times speed. For the speed ramp bar, you want to drag the normal speed all the way to the end. We don't need him to gradually speed up, we just want it to take off instantaneously. So the other thing we want to do is add Earthquake to our clean plate so that way after the landing what I'm going to do is start on the first frame of our clean plate. I'm going to keyframe the amount on the Earthquake. I'm going to set that to 15 and then I'm going to also set a keyframe on the epicenter and what I'm going to do is go frame by frame. I'm going to move the epicenter around and we'll do that about 10-12 times or so. And then we're also going to lower this amount to nothing. Kind of gives it that shake effect. Now I'm going to take the clip of the landing. I'm going to take that portion of the clip. I'll bring it to the end here. I'm just getting rid of any audio attached to it. You're going to go to the beginning. You're going to trim this clip down to right where he's starting to come down. So right about here, I would say. You're gonna to go to the beginning of that clip, so on the very first frame, again, you're gonna hit option F, that's gonna create a freeze frame right here. We're gonna trim this down to two frames. If you zoom in, you can, you can see frame by frame. So we want this to be two frames, one, two, okay. All right, so zooming in, this is the same process. We have our freeze frame, and then we have our landing. So you want to, once again, go to your effects panel and type in mask. We're gonna grab the draw mask and put that over the freeze frame clip and then you are going to draw another mask to cut out your subject. Also, make sure you put your freeze frame clip on top of the blank background like before. There we go. Okay, again, so you want to go to the beginning of it. You're going to hit your transform tool. You're going to set a keyframe, the second frame towards the middle of your clip to be midway, and you want your first frame 
to be up higher. I'm going to bring that up just a little higher. Then you're going to want to go to your directional again. Pull the directional effect onto your clip. Drag that in a downward direction. I'm going to set the amount similar to before. I think that looks pretty good. Find the part where he's landing as he's coming down. So I'll probably go to right about here. Again, hit Shift B to create that break in the clip. And you're going to speed up just that portion where he's hitting the ground. So we'll do another times two and then drag this bar up so there's no gradual increase in speed. So after your freeze frame where the landing takes place is where you want your earthquake effect, pull that on. Let's make sure we're on the first frame. Keyframe, keyframe, we're gonna set that to 15. Again, frame by frame, we're gonna move the epicenter around. Okay, and we're gonna lower this amount to nothing. And then we have something that looks like this. All right, next you want to bring in your effects. So I'm going to go ahead and paste the effects I already did and showed you what I used and kind of how I tweaked them and positioned them because a lot of it is just playing around with it until you get it to your liking. If you go up to your sound effects and you type in rumble, I ended up using LFE rumble number one here. I use that for kind of an in and out build up that you'll see by the end of it. I also use explosion number two. So if you type in explosion number two for kind of the effect of when he goes through the ceiling. And then I also used explosion five during the takeoff to kind of sell the effect. These three are purely what I use for the takeoff portions. And if you drag your cursor over this little icon right here, this is actually how you can fade in and out audio very simply. So I faded it in about there. I left explosion five as it is and lined it up where I like the sound of it. I faded in the rumble for the takeoff. For the landing sound effect, I used explosion five and rumble and I actually reversed the clip. So you just click on the clip Go up here and you can go to reverse clip and that's going to play the sound backwards. So you can see it kind of has this effect of like the sound getting closer faster, which really sells that landing. So for this, I have a combination of a dinosaur footstep and then a deep sub impact that I also got from Storyblocks. And then with the explosion and the rumble, it ties it all together. All right, so now we're gonna get into the overlays. Going back to my other project, let me pull this one up and go into the compound clip just to show you what we have going on. So above all of what we've already done, I found a green screen on Storyblocks that just had um, kind of a break falling through the floor, making a hole in the floor. I did a freeze frame on that because the clip ended just so it would stay there. Just to start, all of these are overlays that I got from Storyblocks.com. So basically you can just put them over top of our clip. With this one, I have the blend mode set to normal. I have uh, particles that fly through the air. I started with a low opacity at the beginning of the clip. So if you go up here, you can see if I go back to the very first frame, I set a keyframe, I lowered the opacity to 0%. You can see over here, it will gradually increase. I had it go to about, looks like 100% right there. It stays at 100% and then I start fading it out around here until the end. With this smoke on the floor, I created, I went to my effects tab, I typed in mask and I grabbed the shape mask. I put the shape mask on top of this smoke clip and that's what you're seeing here on the screen. I set keyframes on the shape mask so that way it kind of spreads with the smoke and isn't instantly spread across the entire floor. I wanted it to really make the effect look real. So I let that gradually spread out and then I also have keyframes on the opacity so that smoke on the floor dwindles out. And I do a similar thing with this steam pressure I got from Storyblocks. So it actually starts at the inside of the screen coming to the left. So what I did is I just changed the rotation so the smoke, the, so the steam pressure would be going upwards. That's what you're seeing here. So try not to get it confused with my, this alpha explosion smoke. That's actually coming from the ceiling with some debris in it because I wanted it to to kind of sell the effect of the roof blowing out as well. So this steam pressure, I have the opacity start at about 4% as he takes off and that gradually goes up and then back down to nothing. With this smoke, I added a shape mask and I set the blend mode to screen. And then I feathered out the shape mask and that was because without the mask, you can see towards the end here, it creates like a, a harsh line. 
come back and I add my shape mask with the feathering, it takes that away. So I have a, it just looks a lot better. Here until I have the clip end, I lower the opacity until it's gone. So with all of these effects here, I also have this unplanned, I mean, none of it was planned, but this was really unplanned. I found this collapse hole in the ground. That's where the ground collapse is. So I downloaded that as well as all of the other overlays you saw. So let me start with, once you put anything with a green screen on it, what I did was I went to my effects panel, typed in keyer. So that's where you can see if I click on this clip, I have a keyer here. If I get rid of the keyer, it shows my green screen. I had to change the position of where the ground was falling in and I had to reduce the size of it down to about 45%. Added this keyer effect to the green screen which blends it in and everything is just about tweaking it to your liking it's always a little bit time consuming to get exactly how you want it so that that's the gist of it i hope that was helpful so with the directional effects the earthquake effects the sound effects the music the overlays the green screen the particles all that stuff a little nice intro to go with it this is what we have Hello? What do you mean Timmy's in the well? I'm on the way.